today we are taking a tour de French watchmaking to uncover a hidden gem that has long been overlooked. Get ready as we shed light on the most underrated watch brand of all time, Lip, and we will explore six key reasons why Lip is magnifique and should be held in more esteem than it is. They are so much more than just the brand whose logo looks like the Hewlett Packard one. Allez, on y va. On y va. Let's kick off things with Lip's inspiring early history. It all started in the picturesque town of Besançon, nestled near the Swiss border, where a vibrant watchmaking community thrived. It was birthplace of Victor Hugo, who wrote Le Miserable, and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the late 18th century, a Swiss watchmaker named Laurent Magavand, who happened to be the son-in-law of the legendary Abraham Breguet, led a group of skilled artisans to Besançon. This marked a turning point for the region, which would go on to be a hotbed of French watchmaking. In 1867, Emmanuel Lippmann, hailing from Al Sass founded Le Comptoir de Horologie, which would later expand and be renamed to Society Anonymy de Horologie Lippmann Frères. Besançon's status as a hub of precision watchmaking was further reinforced by milestones like the 1883 Observatory and Astronomical Clock. Lip, as part of this prestigious tradition, introduced Calibre 20.3, a movement that obtained the coveted chronometer certification in 1899. They even set up a proper factory in 1907, and their watches played a role in the Great War. Lip's journey continued during the Great Depression when André Donat developed the iconic T-18, which remained in production until the 1950s. And then there enters Frederick Lippmann, known as Fred Lipp, the man who had become synonymous with the brand. In 1931, after gaining invaluable knowledge from working on the assembly lines of American companies, Fred Lipp joined the business. An action typical of his entrepreneurial spirit is that he would play a pivotal role in kickstarting the Soviet watch industry, with Lipp's movement serving as a foundation for many of the original watches produced there. In short, short, Lip's early history is on par with other major brands that we revere today. Reason number two why Lip is awesome is that they kept going during times of conflict and adversity. When World War II began, Lip swiftly rose to the occasion with their subsidiary, Sapro Lip, producing vital military equipment. Unfortunately, the German forces occupied Besançon early on, temporarily halting Lip's operations for the benefit of the enemy. But Lip did not retreat. Even in the face of occupation, Fred Lip and his team continued to produce watches as part of Free Friends. From 1941, they crafted the Type 1 watch in Issenden and later Valence, their last stronghold before France fully fell to occupation in 1942. After covertly weathering the storm of war, Besançon was liberated in 1944, and Fred Lip returned to take the helm. A testament to their prominence, Charles de Gaulle himself gifted a Lip T-18 to Winston Churchill. Naturellement, the aristocats. Reason 3 is Lip's underappreciated contributions to modern movement technology, and should not just be an asterisk on the end of the list of the usual Swiss names. You might think that Hamilton Ventura takes all the credit for electric watches, but hold your horses, Lip and Elgin had already announced the development of an electric watch, the R27 caliber, in a joint conference as early as 1952. Yes, that's right, Lip was a pioneer in electric watches even before Hamilton. However, due to some technical challenges, it wasn't until December 1958 that they were able to bring their electric timepieces into production. But Lip didn't stop there, they also contributed to electronic watches, introducing a transistor-controlled watch with the Lip R50, a collaboration with Swiss partners. Lip even had a hand in early quartz research, which ultimately led to the development of the R032 and R033 quartz movements in the early 70s. Lip pushed the boundaries of modern electronic era watchmaking innovation and deserve far more recognition for their contribution. Now let's delve into reason number four, Lip's exceptional marketing prowess. If you think Rolex, or even Timex has a monopoly on captivating campaigns, think again. Lip knew exactly how to capture attention and create a buzz around their timepieces. One prime example is their association with mounted explorers through the Himalaya watch, designed with shock-resistant movement and hardened alloy Elgiloy from their partners at Elgin. This timepiece adorned the wrists of legendary mountaineers. Lip's innovative marketing genius didn't stop at mountain exploration, they fused their electric watch technology with the realms of diving and skiing, seizing the opportunity to sponsor the Grenoble Winter Olympic Games in 1968. It was here that Lip unveiled one of my personal favourites, the Nautic Ski Watch, prominently worn by the French ski team. This was produced in multiple variations, as you can see on screen now. You can still get your hands on a modern version 
version of this classic watch today, although it's no longer using the electric calibre. Also on the marketing front, Fred Lip was a man who knew how to make strategic moves. He secured deals with renowned brands like Blanc Pan, leading to Lip's involvement in the iconic 50 Fathoms watch. Similar collaborations took place with Breitling, with the Navitimer, and Universal Genève. Lip collaborated with Singer Dials, which were used in the legendary Rolex Daytona, creating this very cool chronograph that I want. Reason number five, Lip was a trailblazer when it came to collaborating with designers to create cool watches. They broke new ground by infusing artistic vision into their timepieces. The Prince Francois de Bashmakov's jump hour was an early example that foreshadowed Lip's later jump into design, alongside the plastic Calypso range and the gauge-like Lip Secateur. But it was under the leadership of Claude Nuschwender after Fred Lip's departure and during the Lip Affair strikes, a milestone in industrial action, that designer collaborations flourished. The like of Rudy Meyer, Isabel Hebe, Mark Held, and Michelle Kin joined forces with Lip to create vibrant, eye-catching timepieces. All of these folks were established designers in other fields, with some examples of their work on screen now. A particular favourite series of mine were these very Swatch-esque Michelle Boyer, Le Candide numbers, really poppy looking and distinct. Of special note was this pièce de résistance, the iconic Mac 2000, designed by Roger Talon, the man behind the design of the TGV. This watch was a available in a few iterations that you can see on screen now. With some other models building off the design language with distinct pushers and D shapes, this is a symbol of Lip's dedication to innovative design collaborations. It's safe to say that Lip set the stage for future collaborations between watch brands and renowned designers. Think Seiko's collaboration with Giugiaro, who undoubtedly drew inspiration, whether directly or indirectly, from the Lip Mac 2000. <laughs> And now we arrive at our final reason why Lip is the most underrated watch brand, and a key reason for this channel, its foray into digital watches. Lip, in collaboration with the visionary Roger Talon, ventured into the realm of digital timepieces. The Roger Talon design series of watches brought forth LED technology in both this square version and D-shaped version collaborating with Degena. But that's not all. The Zulu Quartz and a Digi watch was a super cool collaboration that is lesser well known and is a watch I'm personally eager to get my hands on. And there you have it. As as we tour a few final cool examples, Lip is a French brand that has been overlooked for too long, stands tall with an impressive origin story rooted in innovation, a history intertwined with world wars, contribution to modern movement technology, ingenious marketing campaigns, pioneering collaborations with designers, and a presence in the digital watch game. Yet despite their achievements, Lip remains vastly underappreciated. So I ask you, why does no one seem to care about this extraordinary brand? Let your thoughts be heard in the comments section below, it's time to give Lip the recognition it truly deserves. If you enjoyed this video, check out the video on screen now on why citizens' history deserves more kudos than it's received. They, like Lip, are criminally underrated. <laughs> <laughs>